Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be installing a torque lift eco hitch on our 2014 Honda CRV. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the mud flaps behind the rear tires. So this is the passenger mud flap behind the rear tire and you'll see we've got a Phillips head screw here, a second one up here, a third one in there, and there's supposed to be a push pin down here that appears to have fallen off. Now for this last screw back here, depending on the car, you may find this doesn't want to come out. Uh, and that's because on the back side of this, you can reach up underneath or in and around the back. Uh, there is a nut on the back. And so I'm going to grip that with a pair of pliers from underneath and then unscrew that last screw. The mud flap and just slide that off. Now here on the passenger side for this mud flap, you're going to have a screw here and one screw here. No third screw, but underneath here is going to be a plastic clip. So here's the view from underneath showing that clip we're going to remove right here. Take a small pry tool or you could use a screwdriver. And once you've gotten it a little bit loose, you can take another pry tool like this and then just work in here and pull this out just like that okay before we remove the two screws up here after we've taken out this clip right in here there is one more nut that might be holding this in up under here and i'm going to pan down and show you that now it's almost impossible to see unless you come around the front like that and look in this little notch Okay, one more hiccup. If you're trying to remove uh, this nut right in here, that there is a screw on the other end. If you look up in here, you'll see a hole right in there. So I'm gonna reach in here and I'm gonna put as much downward pressure as I can on that screw head to allow me to take the nut off from the other side. Okay, now we can remove the last two screws here, one here and one here to take off the mud flap. I can just take out the mud flap like that. Just note that after you remove the mud flap, you're still going to have this screw hanging down here. And it's only removable by putting your finger up in here. And since we are going to have to remove this piece of trim to go up and around the wheel well, I am going to reach in here, uh, one hand here and one hand here after I put this camera down and we're going to take this one out. So underneath here now, this is the trim that goes up and around the wheel well on the driver's side. You'll have one screw here to remove, and then we're going to follow that wheel well up, and at the top, another screw right there. Okay, now with the screw removed down here and up top here, we're going to gently peel back this arch liner here, but not all the way. We don't have to take it all the way off. We just need to clear it from the bumper assembly. So to do this, we're just gonna reach in here and gently pop out until those clips come off. Just come up one at a time, get your finger in here and just till it gives. Okay, so I'm just gonna let just that far off because that's cleared already what I need to so that we can access down here. Now here back on the passenger side, at the bottom, there is a clip. We're gonna remove that clip to free this trim piece that goes around the wheel well. And at the top, we're gonna remove that one Phillips head screw. And similarly, we're gonna pop this off just enough to clear the rear bumper area so we can remove that next. Okay, now that we remove the clip down here, just use some painter's tape to tape the screw to where it came from in here. And we're just gonna pry this flap out and pop off the clips. 
that attach it to the bumper. And we don't need to come out much farther than that. Okay, so to start the process of removing the bumper piece itself, we pull this trim back just far enough. You'll see it exposes a Phillips head screw here and another clip here. Set that aside. And for the clip, just like that. And we'll do the same thing as these two pieces on the other side. And again, I just tape the clip to the side here and I wrap the screw in tape so that it doesn't scratch this. And then I'll put it behind another piece of tape. And again, I'm just gonna stick it to the body over here just so that I remember what came from what. I'm gonna remove the rest of the bumper here. We're gonna pull off this body colored plastic tab or cap and we're going to remove this uh, hex bolt here. You can just take a plastic pry tool and reach in there and pop this plastic tab off and you'll see a bolt in here to be removed as well. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, this hex bolt at the bottom is a five millimeter size. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and for the top bolt here, that is a 10 millimeter size. And I'll do the same thing on the other side and then tape this probably to the inside here so that I remember where it came from. Okay, underneath the bumper, you're gonna have three more clips to pull off. One over here on the far left of the screen, another one right here, and a third one right here. Okay, so once you take these off, you may break off some of the tabs, like here, two, three of the tabs are broken off. Just have to pick up some replacement clips, just get them from Honda. I'll put part numbers for anything I have to replace in the description. Now this part I'm not going to mess around with, um, the Honda instructions for their trailer hitch mentioned to run some painter's tape along here and here and as well on this side. Basically any seam here that could be scratched when you remove the bumper. So I'm going to tape these sections off now and basically just do what they say. And I leave a corner folded under itself to make it easy to pull this off and just run my gloved hand just right over the lip. I just made the tape go right over that edge like that. I'll do the others so now. We got all that taped off on the passenger side. I'll do the same taping on the driver's side. Tape in place here on both sides. And we can begin to remove the bumper. So to start removing the bumper, from the car, we're gonna reach in where we tape and just pull off the clips one by one as work our way up. Okay, and we'll do this on the other side and then make our way across. Okay, once all of these clips are worked free, then you can, with a helper, slide off the rear bumper and then turn it forward and set it down. One option to consider is just to lay the bumper on top of the box that the Eco Hitch came in. It's almost the perfect height to hold the bumper up like this. Okay, so we're looking up underneath the car now. We have to remove this bottom panel. And so from the roughly center, if you come in, you can see the muffler over here. On the right side, there's a big hole. And in there, you'll see one uh, 10 millimeter bolt. And then if we come back and you come over here, you'll see another circle, a second 10 millimeter bolt. And then over here, a third one. Now in the center, there's also a clip here that we'll have to pry out because that is 
holding this in as well. So three bolts and one clip, we'll take those out now. And again, just kind of create a little bit of a gap and bend that down. And now with the clip removed, we'll work on these bolts here one at a time. And we'll take those out and set these aside. Okay, now with those three bolts out and the clip right there in the center, this lower panel can be removed. Okay, if the bottom panel doesn't come off right away, um, you'd want to check and make sure that you didn't forget a screw or a tab or a clip. And you'll notice up here, we did just that. There's a piece that's attached right here with this clip, which is screw on the inside of the wheel well on the driver's side. And that, if I come around here, you'll see it right there attached to the felt liner, which was exposed when we took the mud flap off. So I'm gonna remove that screw now. In addition to the screw removed back there from the felt panel, there's another one right here. So I'm gonna remove that too. That is also attached to that bottom panel. Okay, so we have everything removed. I just have a block of wood there holding the panel up, but now we can just remove that bottom panel. We'll drop this and let this piece slide down. Okay, the next thing we're gonna have to do here is detach the muffler from these exhaust hangers. There's two of them. And obviously you wanna be very careful not to damage the muffler. But if you look on the side here, those metal attachment pieces that the rubber, that slip into the rubber, have a barbed raised edge. So we're gonna to have to stretch this rubber to get it over the end of this attachment piece. Try the same thing on this other side. Okay, so we're back underneath the car on the driver's side and you'll see three threaded holes. One, two, and three. These are where the trailer hitch is gonna to attach to. And there's a parallel set of these on the passenger side. And you'll see here, there's some little bit of rust and dirt in here. So before we put the trailer hitch in, we're gonna take uh, a pipe cleaner and a little bit of WD-40 spray oil and we're gonna clean these threads out just to make sure uh, that we don't have anything that's uh, gonna cause us trouble later. Here's a view from straight back behind and underneath the car. Um, to get the trailer hitch itself in place, you actually have to lift it in and come down at an angle like this to get the right side or the passenger side up and over the top of the muffler over here. And it's very helpful if you have a helper to guide that side for you. If you do not have a helper or if you just want a little bit of extra brace, you can use some spare wood. And just to give you a guide here, um, the height is 15 and a half inches exactly just happened to work to give us some support here on the center uh, main crossbar. And so that allowed me to get the one bolt started on the right and another bolt started on the left so that at least those bolts can hold the weight of the hitch and then we can take the support out. But I'm gonna just leave this in here just as a backup for safety and I'm gonna put the remaining two bolts in. The bolts that come with it uh, here are for 17 millimeter socket. There's a lock washer and then a flat washer and they're going to go in just like that. Okay here we are on the driver's side. This is that first bolt that I got in. We'll do the same thing here. I'll just start again making sure my holes are lined up. Um, we'll just start hand threading these in. And just take your socket 
and start. To get the second bolt started, where you're directly over the muffler, it's gonna be a bit tricky. As long as your hole is lined up, you're gonna to have to start this by hand, threading this in. So here what I did was I took a regular crescent wrench and it's painstakingly slow, but I basically got this on here and tightened this up until I got to that point where I can now work in the socket wrench without pulling down on the muffler too much. And then I'm gonna tighten this up like that for now. I'll do the third one back here. Now, as far as tightening the bolts all the way down, the Honda trailer hitch, if we had that one, for those six uh, bolts, it says to tighten them down to 46 Newton meters or 34 foot pounds. But forklift eco hitch manual says to torque to 38 foot pounds. And since we do have the torque lift hitch and their hardware, I'm gonna go with the 38 foot pound setting. And I'll dial that in now. All right, so now we have the torque wrench set to 38 foot pounds. So we'll just tighten these down to spec. Okay. And we'll repeat that on the other side. So I'll bring this down and at the same time I lift up the exhaust and get that started like that. And then we can work it all the way in. And when that's in all the way, you'll be able to see that the metal piece is going all the way through. And on this side, I just pull this back, rotate it down and get it over that bump of the metal. And then wiggle that back in place. Now we're gonna reattach the underbody panel and make some cutouts to accommodate the eco hitch. What I've done is put the underbody panel back up in place, roughly. Uh, on the driver's side, I've wedged it back in behind the felt liner and the wheel well where it goes and I've made sure that each of the points where the screws go in to mount the underbody panel are directly where they need to be. That's gonna allow me now to mark the areas that I need to cut from the underbody panel to accommodate the eco hitch. I'm just gonna take some chalk and I'm gonna make some marks here as to where my cutouts are gonna be. But you just wanna give yourself a sense of how far back to go and how wide to go without going too wide. Now we're also going to need to trim, I think, a little bit here to accommodate this side of the eco hitch, but I wanna just do this one first and then place it back where it goes and then check this out so I don't cut too much prematurely. I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors, like pin snips or heavy duty shears, cut this like so. Just like that. Okay, we've repositioned the underbody panel. The centerpiece fits fine where we cut out for the hitch itself, but we still have this corner is pushed down. So we need to take off a little bit here and again, I'm just going to mark with chalk, and it looks like maybe just about an inch or so. So we'll come down like to there, cut that off, and it should fit right up where that bends back anyway. So here we're just going to come down from here to the chalk mark, and then straight out, and that'll be our final cut. And we'll try that. Okay, so we have it back in place here and it fits up nicely there, but I can see that hole is not quite aligned. It needs to be able to come forward a little bit. 
And in order to do that, I'm just going to take a little bit more off of the back here. I'm not even going to take it off. I'm just going to come down a little bit. And it does. Now it comes forward and we have alignment with the hole right there. So I think that's it for the cutting. But now I've put in the three bolts just hand tightened to make sure everything fits. And now we're gonna go here and tighten them down. We're gonna put the clip back in place here. And I've made sure that the hole is lined up first. Okay, so there's the center clip pushed back in here. We have to put in the two Phillips screws here and here to reattach just this upper portion of the underbody panel. Put in right there. And there's that white clip back there that's gonna tell you you've got that threaded in the right place. Now we're ready to reinstall the rear bumper fascia. And before we clip everything back in, we'll make sure that it's all lined up, especially down here along the bottom seam. So we'll reattach the bumper now. We'll start down here with the five millimeter hex bolt. They will move up to here and we'll reattach the 10 millimeter bolt. And I'll do the same thing over here. Take out the bolt and down. And we'll reinsert the plastic clips. There is a side labeled up there, and we'll just put that right in place and click. Do the same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna reattach the three clips that go underneath the bumper here. Now these are the ones where I did lose a couple of pieces on the edge. So I'm gonna put these in for now, but I will order replacements later. Okay, now to reattach the bumper clips, now that we've put in all of the screws and bolts, we're just going to follow the seam and push in to make sure that the clips reattach. Make sure that once it's pushed in, all of the seams line up and they're not sticking out any further on either side so that you know that it's attached properly. And we'll repeat this on the other side. Once both sides are attached, we can remove the tape carefully and take that all off. Okay, and everything lines up very nice and smooth. It looks good. All right, now we're going to reattach the clip here and the screw here. And that'll make sure the final part of the bumper is in place. And for the clip, you want to push that clip out like that first and that allows you to compress these four legs and then you can push that in like that and then push in the clip head so that's in place and we'll do the screw Okay, with that done, we'll do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll reattach this trim. Now we're going to reattach the trim in each of these clips that we've popped off here. I'm just going to go work my way down, two, three, just like we were reversing what we were doing before. Now for the bottom most clips here, you'll see inside you have two yellow ones, one, two, and a black one. But when you push, they kind of just push everything out of the way. So you're gonna have to reach underneath to make sure those clip together by pushing from both sides. Okay, when you're done, the seam should look smooth 
and lined up like this and the hole underneath should be lined up and ready to put in the clip and then up top we're going to reattach the screw underneath here to the felt liner and the trim piece. Now we're back on the driver's side. We're going to reattach the mud flap. This piece is going to sit back in exactly as we had it, much like this. But we have a different, slightly different arrangement of clips and screws on each side. All right, to reattach the mud flap on the driver's side, I'm just going to line it up. And if you remember, it's going to be like this. However, underneath, we're going to have a clip here. And then in here, we're going to have that access for the screw that's going to be in this cavity here. And so we're going to attach those first. Carefully fished the screw in from the top. It comes down here. Put on the washer in that nut to attach the mud flap at the bottom. And then again, you have to get your finger through in the back. Hold down on the top of the screw from above. And then you can tighten this nut until the screw starts spinning above. There is a lock washer on the top, so as you tighten this down, you'll feel that you don't have to really hold the screw once it's, the lock washer starts to grip. I have a feeling this used to be a clip. Uh, at some point it was replaced with the screw plus the washers and the nut, but either way, that holds on the mud flap. Now before we attach the passenger side mud flap here, we have to put in one last pin or clip through the bottom of the wheel trim and then into the bottom of the bumper. And so you can squeeze from above and below. We'll make sure that goes in place. And that holds these two pieces together. And so now we can reattach the mud flap. To get the mud flap on the passenger side, now we just guide it up into place like that. We're gonna have a screw down here, a screw here, and that final screw back in the corner. And then for the final one, we'll push that through this way and attach the nut on the back. There it is with everything put back together. The eco hitch doesn't stick out too far. It's not prominent, looks nice. Next, we're gonna put on a bike rack and some bikes and give you some measurements for ground clearance. All right, here's the hitch with a Maxol two bike carrier rack on it. To give you some perspective here, you're looking at 11 and a quarter inches or so to the bottom of the bike rack itself. And you're looking at 11 inches to the bottom of the trailer hitch itself. This is an empty car, no load in it. I just wanna show you uh, with the 29er, no uh, stabilizer here, just on the top bars. That brings that front tire down to about nine inches from the pavement. So when you mount the bike, if you don't have a hitch riser, uh, you either have to lift up and mount it here to lift the frame up higher or uh, use it with the hitch riser. I'll show you what I mean now. So just a simple change in the way you mount the bike here. If you put the support underneath the bottom bar here like this, so the bike is basically level across, that changes your height and your bottom tire is about 14 inches off the pavement, which is much better. So a lot of this just depends on how you mount the bike on the rack as well. Let's check out the trailer hitch riser. Here's the hitch riser. This gives you a four inch rise from here to here. We'll put that on now and slide that in. I'll stick that in as a temporary. All right, here it is with the hitch riser mounted and this bracket plate here to stabilize the hitch riser to the hitch itself. And to show you again, you've got 11 and a half inches now to the bottom of the hitch riser, but it raises the bottom uh, to about 15 and a quarter 
where the hitch riser is. So this is where you'd be mounting your bike rack now. So let's put the bike rack on and show you what that's like. This does even better for you. The bottom of the bike rack itself is now 15 and a quarter, basically about the same as the bottom at the hitch riser itself. We'll put a bike on and show you what that does. So with the hitch riser now, that brings the bottom of this 29er to 17 and a half inches off the pavement, considerably higher than the bike rack bottom itself, and of course, than the hitch extension itself. This uh, actually works out quite well, especially if you're gonna have load in the car. Uh, you really still just have to worry about your low point here uh, being around 11 inches, but because this comes out and goes up, if you have dips or valleys that you're driving over, uh, this still gives you more clearance. Here we have the Yakima Full Tilt 5 bike carrying rack mounted with the hitch riser and the eco hitch. This rack weighs considerably more and still you're at about 14 inches, maybe 13 and a half inches at the low point of this fin here with no weight on the rack or in the car. And so you'll see like this rack is so big and heavy, it sticks out farther that it does sag a little bit. I'll put one bike on here now to show you uh, what that means in terms of the tire height. Okay, with the bike mounted up high like that, you are still at 18 inches to the bottom of the tire, which is considerably higher than the bottom of the Yakima rack itself. But given that this sticks out so far from the car, as you can see there, that's still really good. So to give you some perspective here with the Yakima Full Tilt 5 bike carrier, as far as that sticks out from the car, I put a tape measure down at the spot where the eco hitch ends. Then you have the trailer hitch riser, then the Yakima rack, and it extends all the way out. So from the edge of the bike rack itself straight down, you're looking at about 54 inches or four and a half feet away from the back of the hitch itself. So you can definitely do it. Five bikes hanging off the back of the eco hitch on the CRV, uh, but that's gonna be some serious, serious length off the back of the car. And you do have to watch your height down here, especially if you have a full load in the car, that 11 inches is gonna come down. So you do step up a bit, which will help you when you're going down uh, dips or edge of driveway and whatnot, but you still have to be careful. All right, there we are. Eco Hitch installed on the 2014 Honda CRV. I hope that was helpful. Thanks very much for watching.